So you just started playing Rocket League, or maybe you've been playing Rocket League and let's face it, you kinda suck. Listen, it's okay. Rocket League is very hard and it takes a long, long, very long time to get good at this game. In this video, I'm going to explain to you how Rocket League is meant to be played so that you can hopefully improve a lot faster than the average player. I'm not going to go into great detail for all of the advanced mechanics and advanced versions of those mechanics and like super, super advanced versions of those advanced versions of advanced mechanics. But if you are looking to improve even more and maybe go deeper into what it takes to be good at Rocket League, check out my Rocket League Mechanics Master Course. In that course, I go over everything from things like basic mechanics, like the fast aerial and half flipping, to more advanced mechanics like flip resets and double touches. So I've got a link in the description below for that. Use code Floomp for 30% off that course. Okay, without further ado, let's jump in. Like most sports, the goal of Rocket League is very simple. Try to score more goals than your opponent or opponents. But as we've seen over the years since Rocket League came out, the way in which you as a player can accomplish that goal has become less and less simple. Now, when you are on offense, you have two main options for how you can score a goal. You can either score from a solo play or from a team play. So solo plays are pretty simple in nature, but difficult to master. This can be anything from going up for an aerial at midfield to taking the ball you know, off of the wall, flying your car up to the ceiling, flying down and shooting the ball off the backboard, and then rebounding it into the net. So a solo play is basically just you, your car, and the ball, and you basically taking over and scoring, as opposed to doing something like a give and go, which is more of a team play. So being able to score solo plays is only possible when you've spent lots and lots of time working on your mechanics and your car control. So if you wanna be able to dribble around your opponent and make them look like total fools, which let's be real, who doesn't wanna do that? You must spend lots of time practicing, carrying the ball, you know, changing its direction quickly. If you wanna be able to fly high over the other team, and carry the ball into the net, you have to practice it in custom training for hours and hours on end. Practice leads to actual skill in Rocket League. It's that simple. If you're unwilling to practice, you'll never be able to pull off cool solo plays. Now, the other way to score on offense, and this is really the heart of Rocket League in my opinion, is by setting up a passing play. Basically learning how to control your car and control what you're doing enough so that you don't just hit the ball forward every time, but you also learn to hit it sideways and hit it off the backboards and hit it exactly where you want to, sometimes even back to your teammates. Now this takes another level of awareness than most new players just don't have. And honestly, it does take time the more you play. Try to know where your teammates are at all times and really think through the shots that you're hitting. Don't just mindlessly hit the ball forwards every time as fast as you can. Maybe learn how to flick the ball up in the air to a teammate or smash it off the backboard so that they can come in and score. In my opinion, there's nothing more enjoyable than setting up a passing play and seeing it end in a really nice goal but it's also really difficult to actually practice team plays. So honestly, I spend more of my time practicing things like mechanics and skills so that you know I can get better at solo plays because if you have those skills, it's really not hard to transfer those over into say hitting an accurate pass. All right, since we have to, let's talk a little bit about defense and what it takes to play solid defense in Rocket League. Again, there are two main situations, basically defending against solo plays or defending you know, more as a team. So when you're coming up against a player attempting to score a solo play, whether it's a dribble or an air play, the key is to learn how to wait and position yourself in a place where you can defend the most possibilities. So if a player is carrying the ball towards you, you don't wanna just be facing them, driving directly at them, but rather position your car to the side a little bit and sort of slowly close the distance between you and them. And as often as possible, wait as long as you can for them to actually go for their shot. Don't rush in you know sometimes you do have to sometimes you just have the read on them but usually it's best to wait till you absolutely have to and then go take the ball from them now as a team defense can kind of get more complicated but the main thing to know is this idea of basic rotation this is something that i'll explain in a moment basically you never want to be going for a save or a block at the same time as your other teammates so just know when it's your turn to go and when it's your turn to sit back and defend the next possible shot. We'll talk a little bit more about basic rotation later on in the video. In Rocket League, think of your car as your weapon. If you understand how to use it, you'll be fine. But if you don't know how to use it, you'll just kind of flop and flail around like me and my brother trying to 
jujitsu. There are five primary mechanics that you need to know if you're going to learn anything in Rocket League. So earlier I mentioned that I have this mechanics course. Well, if you don't understand these five things, you won't be able to even dream of doing some of the stuff that I go over in that course. So here's what your car can do besides just drive and turn like a normal car. So it can jump and even double jump. It can turn in the air. It can air roll in the air by pressing air roll and turn at the same time. It can boost and it can dodge. So combine all of these things together and you get the basics of things like freestyling, for example, which is, you know, flying through the air while you're boosting and turning and air rolling and just basically looking really cool. The best advice I can give you as you're trying to learn how to use these mechanics is just go into free play and start driving around. You know, just do things like jump and double jump, dodge different ways like dodge diagonally and sideways and backwards, try jumping up in the air and boosting so that you can fly around the field, drive up on the walls, up on the ceiling, like get as comfortable as you can with your car and with hitting the ball in different ways. At the highest level of Rocket League, a place that you'll be in about a thousand hours or more, Rocket League is actually pretty simple. It's basically driving your car around quickly, you know, picking up boost and driving around the field and preparing to randomly fly at the ball with pinpoint accuracy, speed, and precision. And then in the middle of all that, there's a bunch of crazy high level mechanics that we're not gonna worry about in this video. Now at first, controlling your car will feel like you're doing things on a controller in real life and then the car is doing them in response to you in the game, sort of like an RC car. But it won't take long before you begin to feel like you are actually one with the Rocket League car. Like it's actually you flying through the air, attacking the ball or chasing your opponent because you want to get that third demo because you're trying to just run into them for some reason. The best way to get better at controlling your car so that you can actually hit the ball where you want it to go is by practicing. Go into free play, hit the ball around as much as you can, go into custom training and practice different kinds of shots from things like aerials, which is basically where you, you know, fly through the air and hit the ball in the air. And by the way, don't feel bad if you suck at this takes quite a bit of time before you can master this, to shots where you can actually work on carrying the ball off of the walls through the air into the goal. Now remember, getting better at anything, and especially Rocket League, means having to spend lots of time repeating the same things over and over again until they become basically automatic for you. So if you put in the hours, I promise, you'll get to a point where you're doing things with your car that you couldn't have dreamed of when you first started playing this game. All right, now I wanna talk a bit about positioning in Rocket League. In the very, very early days, many high-level Rocket League players would stick primarily to one position, like you have in soccer. So the goalie would stay in the goal, or close to the goal, and would only leave if they needed to sort of clear the ball down the field. But we now know that this is not the best, most efficient way to play Rocket League. There is no goalie or forward in Rocket League. Everyone has to play every position at some point throughout the game, and you need to be able to quickly rotate in and out of those various positions. So let's start with that important Rocket League concept of rotation. When playing any Rocket League game mode besides solos, that is 1v1, you need to be able to understand your place on the field as it relates to your teammate or your teammates. The concept of basic rotation is pretty simple. You only want one person hitting the ball at one time. You never want to be right next to the ball trying to hit it while your teammate or teammates are doing the same. So here's how rotation should work most of the time. After you hit the ball or attempt to hit the ball and fail, you should use your momentum to move around the field, maybe picking up a few boost pads or a corner boost while driving, and go around the field behind your teammate so that you can back him or her up if they miss, or you know, get ready for a pass or whatever it may be. In Rocket League, you should always be moving. You never want to find your car at a complete stop, and you're always in sort of that circular motion of rotating around and behind your teammates. If there are three total players on your team, then basic rotation usually means that you hit the ball or you attempt to hit the ball, you get out of the way to back up your teammates while the next person hits it, and because you're all the way back, the other teammate will then come in and hit the ball, and then it will be your turn again. Now at higher levels, players will intentionally cut off this basic rotation, and even in lobbies where there are newer players, it's okay if this happens sometimes, you know, it's it's not a big deal, sometimes it's, it's not exactly perfect, but in general, the main idea is that after you aggress, you want to get around and back behind your teammates as fast as possible. Remember to give your teammates space. This is everything. Sometimes you'll have that urge when it's clearly not your turn, and that's okay, but as you improve, you'll see that this is almost never the way to play Rocket League. 
being spread out is really the key. Now, when you rotate, that is you're moving back into position after trying to hit the ball, most of the time you want to get back behind your teammates on the opposite side of the field than the ball is on. So you don't wanna be rotating directly back at your teammates as they're trying to come up and hit the ball. You wanna be rotating on the other side of the field behind them because it makes you more spread out and puts you in a better position to defend the goal or hit another shot. Think of rotation like the game of knockout in basketball. You shoot your shot and when you're done, you run back around in line behind everyone. That's basically how Rocket League is played. Like you're a team of people playing knockout. You're shooting and then you're running around behind the next person. So if somebody tells you that they play goalie or you know if they say that there is a goalie in this game like it's their position or your position, don't listen to them. They don't know what they're talking about. All right, I want to leave you guys with this one idea, one concept as you go out on the pitch every day and try to get better at this game. You cannot improve at Rocket League unless you're willing to try new things. And even more importantly, you have to be ready to fail. So let's take aerials for example. You can't learn how to hit aerials consistently in this game unless you're willing to fail at hitting aerials in the game, like in an actual match. So go for them. Like it doesn't really matter if you miss the ball and give up a goal. You'll never get better unless you try out your skills under pressure. A lot of newer players just, you know, train and practice things here and there, but they aren't willing to try them out in a game and thus they improve a lot slower than the person who's just like, whatever, I'm just gonna go for stuff. I like to use the model Rocket League without fear. Work on new things in practice, and then don't be afraid to go for them in game. That's how I got to where I am in this game, and I really do think that it's the key to improving fast. Failure isn't a bad thing, it's how you learn what is right. Like Thomas Edison said, I haven't failed to hit an aerial, I've just learned 10,000 ways how not to hit an aerial. All right, if you guys wanna go deeper into the game, again, check out my Rocket League Mechanics Master Course. I've got a link in the description. Tons of people have already used it and loved it, and I'm sure you will as well. You can use code FLUMP at checkout to get 30% off, so it's kind of a nice deal. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Peace out.